Hand tracking has been part of DCS for a while now and in this video I will show you what you can use it for, what not to use it for and how you can make this work for yourself using the Quest 3. And let me tell you first that the hand tracking and the finger tracking itself works very well. And no, we are not going to use the hand tracking feature to operate the joystick or the throttle. So what can we use it for? Well, uh, by the way, I love how the shadow moves according to my hand tracking as well. Well, that's fantastic. Okay, so not to operate the joystick, but we can use it for like closing the canopy. Things that we don't want to bind to our hotes. Uh, let me get into more detail. For example, when we have to start the plane, starting the battery, yeah, that's not something I have set on my hotas. I don't have enough buttons for that. So using the hand tracking feature to just start the battery, fantastic. Same goes for these generators, for example. The left one and the right one. Well, you have to get used to it a little bit, but it's uh, it feels pretty immersive, and it's... It works in a way, it works. You just have to get a bit of a feeling for it, but this is just one example. Um... Apply air supply. Chief, apply ground air supply. As you can see, this I do by Copy. voice commands. Air is now applied. And once that is being set, we can now also click on the starter button over here. Also something I don't have enough space for on my HOTES to bind and I don't really want to click things on my keyboard. Now we wait a bit for the left engine to start and of course we are going to do the same for the other engine. Chief, apply ground air supply. There we go. Copy. Air is now applied. And once that's set, I will just touch the starter button again and this works. Really good. And I put the right throttle into the idle position. And there we go. That's how it starts. And this is how I, well, use buttons that I otherwise, yeah, you know, I can click on them with my mouse, but you know how that is. It's just not very immersive. And I think with the hand tracking, it works as good as with the mouse. Now, just look at this. Nevada in the F5. Absolutely fantastic. But okay, back to hand tracking. Uh, simple things as well, well, you can, you know, lower the gear, put the gear up. Well, this is something I have, you know, uh, set on my HOTAS. Uh, but things that I haven't set to my HOTAS are, for example, activating the pylons. These things over here. Again, works pretty good with the hand tracking itself. So, also this, the jettison button, you know, something... I don't even use the keyboard anymore for this. I don't have buttons set for this on my HOTES. Again, I'm repetitive, but yeah, this works uh, This works pretty well, as you can see over here. And only if Eagle Dynamics could make it a tiny bit better, just a tiny bit more responsive, it would be perfect, really. Now again, I want to highlight that I don't use the hand tracking feature to operate the joystick or the throttle. I use the actual HOTES. It's just for these small buttons here on the side. I don't even know what it is. That, you know, I don't have room for on my HOTES. I don't have enough buttons that I operate with hand tracking. And for that, it works great. Now, another quick example. In the CH-47 here with my co-pilot. Um, Operating the MFDs. Oh, what a struggle, what a struggle in virtual reality with HOTES and not having enough buttons. This works really cool and it works really well as well. I just press the buttons here to operate, uh, well, the MFDs. I don't really know how the MFDs of the CH-47 work, but you understand me, right? I can put uh, the map here, for example, and well, I can scale it here. These are pretty responsive. It could be better. But it works. Especially if you're flying, of course. Just quickly operating the map here. Perfect. I just really hope Eagle Dynamics makes it a bit better. It will be enough. 
All right, so how do we get this to work on the Quest 3? Well, first of all, in DCS, go to the VR option and set it to hands use hand controllers. We don't want to operate the cockpit stick. We don't want to operate the cockpit throttle. It doesn't really work. So uncheck all of these boxes. And this one, well, you can set it to use on both hands. Well, that's all. Don't forget to just press OK in the bottom left. Up next, you open Virtual Desktop when you are in game uh, or before, whatever. And you go to uh, Input and here, check Hand Tracking. Very important, you have to check this Hand Tracking. Okay. Then go to Streaming. And I have set Track Controllers checked. And forward tracking data to PC checked. So in virtual desktop, streaming, track controllers, and forward tracking data to PC. And in input, hand tracking should be checked. Then we go into the Oculus Quest. You can just open it and you go to settings. And in the settings menu, all the way in the bottom, you go to advanced, you scroll all the way down and you just make sure that you check all of these. And last but not least, in the Meta Quest Link app on your desktop, settings, beta, and make sure developer runtime features is checked. Now, if you have a Quest free yourself, I would highly suggest to try this out. It's free, it works with virtual desktop, and it works all right for switching knobs and buttons within the cockpit. Now, I hope this video gives you a little bit of a inspiration of how you can use the hand tracking feature within DCS, and that it helps you to set it up yourself. Now, if you want to keep up to date with the latest VR updates, subscribe to this channel, and as always, I hope to see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.